Alright, how's it going everybody? This is just a special little tidbit, helpful tip for any people using Blender at this time. And if anyone's curious at the time of recording this, I'm using Blender 2.83.3, I think? LTS? It's the latest version of Blender. It's, let me see if I can just pull it up real quick. Blender... Yeah, I'm using the latest one. It's this one right here. I'll just pull it up. It's 2.83.3 LTS. So uh, this is at the time of the recording. But basically, if you're wanting to make something like this for like broadcasting purposes or animations, videos on YouTube, etc., there are, in fact, ways to do it. So not maybe in this sort of perfect manner or in this exact manner, but something a little more cleaner. But, you know, be able to have it in an animation or as a still image. Uh, and I'm just going to be walking you through how specifically you could do it through both Eevee and Cycles. They may not be exact same carbon copies of each other when it comes to, like, the Eevee render and the Cycles render. But they will be pretty darn close. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get started with that. Pulling, up, pulling it up here. So this is as... I think, yeah, I have Bloom on. But, yeah, this is, like, regular Bloom, or this is with Bloom off, and this is just with Eevee. I'll show Eevee first, and then I'll show a method on how to do it with Cycles. So, if you render this out, you know, it looks like this, whatever. And, you know, it's just a flat plane. There's some light in the background. That's not really relevant, but this whole thing is just a model that just lights up with a strength of 5 on all of it. So... Yeah, anyways, so normally when you, you know, are in Eevee, you check boom, or check bloom, and yeah, it looks like it's glowing. So therefore, if you render it out, it should look like it's glowing too. But for whatever reason, I'm assuming it's been a bug or a glitch with Eevee for the longest time, but it's just unfortunate that it's not just a simple checkbox and it works. I mean, you can mess with settings, but it's only relevant to the viewport. So recently, I came across this page here, and let's see, what's it called? Rendering with a luminous outline on transparent background. I found this article that kind of gave, like, a close answer to what I was looking for, but not quite the complete answer. So, yeah, this is this person saying I want to have a glow effect. You know, it shows it in... Uh, it just shows it in Eevee and all that, but if you render it out, it doesn't work. So anyways, the guy here shows, or this person, you know, shows this method of using RGB curves, and that's literally it. Like, making sure the bloom is checked, RGB curve uh, node, or sometimes I guess, it's, I guess it's called color ramp sometimes too. But yeah, you just bring up that, pull it up, and, yeah, and compositing here. Yeah, this is the original. Uh, like, you know, output of what it would look like for all of it. And we're not going to be using that because this is the uh, actual method of how it is. So you go with this, and you can tell right off the bat, it just did it immediately as soon as I highlighted those two outputs. So, I, I guess I could temporarily hide that. Or, yeah. No, it should be fine. We'll just keep it this way. But yeah, basically, with this, there we go, that's a little bit better. So yeah, as you could tell, it's already done it, but essentially it's just RGB curves. Although the person didn't give like a specific correct answer to it, like they kind of just showed this part, but didn't point out like, technically what you would want to do is also ramp these uh, RGB curves up as well, because even like specifically with this, if it was like down here where it was, you notice that the color kind of fades out for, you know, the other colors. So, it's not as inten intense as it should be. So basically, you would bring out this RGB curves. I forgot where it was in relevance to this. Um, yeah, okay, it's, yeah, you just shift A, colors, and it's RGB curves. It's this little node here. So that's basically what you would pull up for it. And like I said, initially you would just kind of curve this up with just one little node. Uh, same with RGB, just kind of bring it up to around the same proximity, and you get kind of that ballpark uh, render. And it doesn't show it here because we got to re-render it out. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, as 
basically this is like a close as possible like one to one similarity to it as far as I could tell just looking at you know because this is the layout this is the viewport of this and then just going back to rendering layout rendering it looks very very like near similar so I'll save the outputs for later but if you want to do something like this in cycles uh, let's just pull it up here yeah with cycles they never have like a bloom viewport uh, display sort of thing so yeah this is the method for EV and if you you know are still determined to do it with cycles basically it's this I don't have the article or the page for this I I discovered this a long a long ways back and just forgot about it but now I have a reason to bring it up so yeah it's essentially it's taking an add node and a glare node and kind of mixing it all together with a bunch of more add additions but basically it's layers going into the add and just to make sure I think it's a vector no converter yes it's this no it's not that <laughs> uh help no is it this okay so it's a color mix it's a color mix node because what it is is just I'll just show it real quick but basically it's like you pull it up and it's, it's on mix initially but you want to change it to add and that's how you get this sort of node but basically you put the image into it the glare into it this will be the main output for your main image and then for glare itself you'll be taking the image and put it in with the glare and then you'll want to add the glare mixture into the alpha channel of the render layer and then the reason why you have all these is to add more intensity into the glow because then you could just start combining them just taking literally the same node adding it into itself with another glare you know and then daisy chaining it with another glare and another glare and so on and so on you could you could keep doing this until it's like very 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 bright but I would say this is about as close as it gets to what I was kind of looking for so I would say this is kind of the best you can also mess around with the settings make it a little bit more intense or even brighter yet it's not showing because we gotta re-render this out sorry <laughs> yeah if we just give it a second render it out yeah it it shows it like that for now but I think yeah it's because I also didn't click on the view there you go <laughs> So yeah, that's it's it's definitely a lot brighter. I probably could well that's because I also got it set too low. Uh, again, if you have it on high, that's the proper quality to it. Also, you can mess around the threshold a little bit more, increase intensity or decrease it. I kind of have it set to zero, and even the size of the whole glow as a whole. Again, I just keep it at eight. I think that was a default to begin with. But yeah, basically you just daisy chain the additions of the glare in with the alpha channel and then at the end of it all this like how far you go with it this ultimately becomes the alpha channel for the outputs and that's pretty much how you could do it with rendering this out uh, again I think you would have to re-render it out for it to show up on here because you get a second and there it goes so yeah that's the method for cycles and EVs is actually obviously relatively easier, but if you want to do it with cycles or you have, you know, you want the realistic lighting but special bloom effects, that's one way to do it. But obviously if you were doing EV, it's way simpler. Almost kind of wish this was just a default thing to go with bloom in the first place, but, or something kind of like that with the coding method, but hey, you know, at least, at least this works. So... Just to point out too, if you're going to be rendering this out, like to make it into something like this, as far as I could tell, I tried to use an OpenEXR, which is like allegedly the one of the better output file methods for this stuff. For some reason, it doesn't output it correctly. Like for some reason, like it'll it'll actually just act like there was no glow in the first place. So you don't get the glare that, or the, yeah, you don't get the bloom effect like you would want. So ultimately, I've had to stick with PNG, 
I'm not sure why it still works with it because again I thought OpenEXR and TI or TIFF I thought those were you know have that compatibility but apparently they do not because if I can pull it up here I'm not sure if I have it around here or not okay I found it so this is the test EXR file which yeah so it had to load in but yeah this is what the EXR file pulls up for that result so uh, I don't know if that's not a thing for it or like if that's kind of a, a flaw with OpenEXR because I heard it's supposed to be like true colors or it's supposed to be like more accurate uh, for your renders and such but apparently apparently it doesn't work with glow effects so yeah basically if you want to have the glow effect and have it animatable or I'm sorry if you want to have it as a still image you would want to go with PNG that seems to work at least and then just for my recommendation if you want to do it in an animation form what I did was I I mean it it's possible it could work with the Matroshka uh, container method with the video codec although what you would want is something with the with the alpha channel which this doesn't have so what I did was I would pull up WebM and VP9 specifically and that gives you the alpha channel for it and then and then if you're one to if you have an animation with audio in it then you would just use opus for that but otherwise if you don't need audio just keep it no audio so yeah uh, like I said you can probably mess around with these and find uh, container methods or video codecs that might have alpha channels that will work for you uh, whatever you're comfortable with but as far as I know WebM works for video and PNG works for a still image so if you're one this type of output so yeah hopefully this uh, video helps out for you all and hopefully you all enjoy it and yeah take it easy <laughs>